Tywin Lannister was one of the few characters who possessed a keen understanding of how the world truly operates. He could see through the facade of virtues like honor, pride, and bravery, recognizing them as mere tools to deceive those idealistic knights. He was well aware of what truly rules the world, fear, practicality, and perception, and this demeanor was often seen as Machiavellian. Basically, a Machiavellian is someone who cares only about getting what they want than the way they get it, often willing to employ any means necessary to reach their ultimate goal, even if it involves manipulating people or using unethical and ruthless strategies to hold on to power. In both the books and the show, Tywin often used that Machiavellianistic approach in almost every choice he made. He wasn't one to shy away from employing cruel and unethical methods. Whether it was showcasing his power or protecting the Lannister name, his actions often pushed the boundaries and created controversies. And much like Tywin Lannister himself, the concept of Machiavellianism is also quite controversial, because it stirs up discussions about ethical values and blurs the lines between what's considered right or wrong. Is it really more noble to kill 10,000 men in a battle than a dozen at dinner? Or is it okay to kill an innocent child from a powerful family to prevent future power struggles for the throne? These questions undoubtedly have multiple answers, and you may always question Tywin Lannister's ethics. But here is the thing. Until his death, he was always the winner. Have you ever lost a war? You think I'd be in my position if I'd lost a war? First of all, he totally destroyed the Reigns and Tarbex for trying to rebel against and disrespect the Lannisters. This was his first win, but not the last. He sent a clear message to all noble houses in the Westerlands and across the realm. Messing with House Lannister comes with brutal consequences. During Robert's rebellion, he stayed neutral for a while and calculated his moves. When he saw that Robert had secured victory, he swiftly joined his side. When he marched on King's Landing, he clearly lied about offering aid and make them open the city gates. But once those gates were breached, he unleashed chaos, showing no mercy to anyone who opposed him, eradicating threats until the last Targaryen was killed. In the end, he managed to maintain his power, and his daughter ended up as the queen. And then the War of the Five Kings erupted, and he found himself surrounded by enemies on three fronts, but he managed to pull through. He orchestrated the Red Wedding, where hundreds of men brutally killed in a completely dishonorable manner. They were unarmed and defenseless. But you see, Tywin didn't care about honor or dignity. His only focus was emerging as the victorious. And once again, he became the winner. While Tywin destroyed his enemies one by one, he was also building a fearsome image throughout the realm. Even when he was a young lord, he was one of the most feared lords across the Seven Kingdoms. Machiavellianism famously says that it's better for a ruler to be both loved and feared, but if one has to choose, it's safer to be feared. And Tywin adopted this approach. With all of those ruthless actions, he wasn't just protecting his family's influence, but also crafting a legacy that struck fear into the Seven Kingdoms. Because he believed that the first priority of being respected is to be feared. His father had been perceived as feeble once, not getting respect from other lords and even harlots. Tywin had witnessed the harsh consequences of being seen as weak, and it was a trauma etched into his very being. In this world, perception is everything, and he built his perception onto fear. However, spreading fear often leads to a bitter outcome, hatred. Tywin was maintaining his powerful image and striking fear throughout the realm, but at the same time, he was building up a whole bunch of people who absolutely hated him. To deal with them, Tywin's solution was simple, wiping them out just like he did with the Reigns and Tarbex. Tywin internalized these excessive behaviors with the Reigns of Castamere because it was the starting point of his fearsome image and it was a smashing success. So he applied that paradigm to all of the situations where he felt the name of House Lannister was at stake. When Aerys insulted him over and over again, Tywin pay him back with interest, sacked King's Landing and getting even the innocents killed when he had sent the mountain after Elia and her children, or when Tyrion married without his consent as a result of his neglectful and abusive upbringing, he made his son watch as his soldiers rape Tysha and have Tyrion join in to rub it in. This approach seemed to bring about short-term compliance, but it also sowed the seeds of long-term hatred. Tyrion, Oberyn Martell, or someone else, they were inevitably going to respond to Tywin's reliance on excessive force, and that's what happened. Tyrion has always been Tywin's weak point, and that's ultimately what led to his demise. Well, there are quite a few reasons why Tyrion was Tywin's weakness, but the most significant ones are undoubtedly Tywin's unjustified blame on Tyrion for Joanna's death, and Tyrion's existence as an obstacle to Tywin's idealized Lannister image. We all know that complex relationship between them, so I won't delve too deeply into that aspect. Instead, I'd like to explore Tywin's perspective and whether some of his actions that led to Tyrion's hatred can be understood, or even justified. Tywin hated Tyrion too, that's for sure, because for him, Tyrion was a living reminder of Tywin's biggest heartbreak, losing his beloved wife Joanna. 
And on top of that, Tyrion was the embodiment of everything he hated through his life and tried to avoid. He was that ill-made, spiteful little creature, waddling about, sleeping with harlots and drinking with thieves. And this perception of him shatters Tywin's idealized Lannister image. For him, having the leader of a powerful house like the Lannisters be a dwarf could potentially put the family's future at risk. It might diminish their ability to inspire fear, command respect, and make a significant impact, almost to the point of being negligible. I think Tywin's idealized Lannister perception bears some resemblance to how the Targaryens and even the Nazis believed in their own superiority. He takes pride in his lineage just as the Targaryens and the Nazis did, viewing his blonde-haired, powerful family or people as being above the rest. While Cersei and Jaime fit Tywin's idea of the perfect Lannisters, Tyrion is pretty much the opposite of that. At this point, it can be clearly seen Tywin's obsession with perception. Because is Tyrion possessing qualities much resembling his father, such as cunning, ruthlessness, or a Machiavellian approaches to politics? Unfortunately, Tywin couldn't get past his hate and shame for Tyrion, even if he knew how capable Tyrion was. But when it comes to Tywin and his other children, their relationship wasn't exactly sunshine and rainbows either. He's got this whole strict and demanding parenting style that's left a real mark on Cersei and Jaime. He looks at them and basically sees a bunch of emotional stuff that he considered as weaknesses. He condemns Jaime for not being as pragmatist as he is, and he condemns Cersei for being a narcissist who thinks she's way smarter than she actually is. What he really wants is for them to be just like him, shove those feelings aside and go all out for the family legacy. You will do as I command and you will marry Loras Tyrell and put an end to the disgusting rumors about you once and for all. Father, don't make me do it again, please. Not another word. My children. You disgraced the Lannister name for far too long. So at the end of the day, every ruthless action he made, every alliance he brokered was a brushstroke on the canvas of perception. He knew that perception could shape reality, and he harnessed this knowledge to his advantage. You may call him as ruthless, dishonorable, or evil, and that's fair. But when it comes down to it, Tywin was fiercely committed to safeguarding the reputation of House Lannister. He was always focused on doing what he thought had to be done without letting empathy or any other emotion get in his way. Much like a president today, prioritizes their country's interests no matter what. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a comment, give a like, and click the subscribe. Your support will greatly help the mysterious algorithm work its magic. And if you want to support me personally, you can join the channel by using the join button. See you next time.